Hello Sector Watchers, welcome to the show. This is the 171st episode of Sector Spotlight for Tuesday the 11th of April and I'm recording it on Monday the 10th after the close of the US markets. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I'm presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. My contact details are on the screen so in case you want to reach out or share anything with us please use any of the handles on the screen. Uh, comment below the videos, uh, put it on Twitter, LinkedIn, whatever you like. Today's show is all about the energy sector. I started looking at commodity rotation, so we'll, we'll, we'll have a look at the rotation of various commodities, focus on energy, and then we'll dive into how that rotation, that favoring of energy commodities, is impacting the rotation of individual stocks inside the energy sector and the energy sector as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sector Spotlight. A few days ago, uh, maybe a week and a half or so, I had a conversation with someone on commodities and the rotation of gold and oil. Uh, so I, I don't look at commodities too often maybe I should do it a little bit more uh, so I it's a mental memo to look more at commodities but for that reason I did start to do that and I started out with looking at oil and commodities and that's all good but I thought let's bring it to a little bit of a broader concept and look at the commodity groups and on the RRG drop down there is a uh, there is a group uh, for commodities it's it's way down um, so here is commodities, S&P, GSCI, GSCI commodity. That's the universe that is on the screen right here. That's a series of major commodity groups as defined by uh, S&P, GSCI. And the chart here on the left is the monthly RRG. So that's the really long-term rotations. And what we see here is that energy, which is obviously a super massive component in all of commodities, is rotating out of leading or has been rotating out of leading into weakening for quite some time already. So this tail is 10 months old. Uh, so this is where we were 10 months ago and this is where we are right now. And you can see that pretty much all of the other groups are moving in the opposite direction. Obviously that's because of the heavy weight of the energy group inside the total commodity index. And when we scroll back in time, uh, you can see that let me uh, put that in the center and that makes it more readable. You can see that that whole run up from the low in 2020 and we have um, energy right here. So that's the in the lagging right there. You can see how energy has been sort of driving that entire rally upwards since early 2020 early 2021 to early 2022 and now we are rolling over going into the weakening quadrant basically telling us that markets are moving out of energy that's the long-term picture now the short-term picture is quite different uh, and you can see that here on the right this is the shorter so this is the weekly rotation and you can see how energy has started to pick up and you can see that here, how that lo those last observations are um, slowing down and the speed of the rotation is slowing down a little bit. And that's being picked up by strength on the weekly RRG. As you can see that blue tail moving into the improving quadrant. And the uh, precious metals, GPX, that's right here, they, are, they have come down, but you can see that they're also kind of stalling here. So they, they reversed and now they're moving uh, lower again. So that's the, that's the weekly rotation, uh, pretty much putting energy in favor over precious metals. And if we then zoom in on the daily rotation, then we can see that that at the moment 
is confirming the weekly. So we got energy here about to cross over into the leading quadrant. And we've got precious metals inside weakening with a very long tail. So it's a very, uh, pretty powerful move heading towards the lagging quadrant. So if to summarize that, uh, on the long term, the precious metals are really strong and energy is moving towards lagging. That's the really long term picture. But the near term, the weekly and the dailies, they favor energy over precious metals. So weekly energy is inside improving. On the daily, it is already about to cross over into the leading quadrant, while precious metals are on both cases inside the weakening quadrant. The weekly has just crossed over and the daily is right here. Now, what does that tell us? How do, how do we look at that on the price charts? And if I bring those up, I've got the energy price chart right here. <clears throat> and what I see here is that after a massive rally, the energy uh, complex, the energy group has come down and is now ha basically has bottomed in a very important support area. I call this a support area because there is not real, <clears throat> there's not a real clear cut support level, but I think that this area around 225 is important as well as the area around 250. So let's roughly say 225 to 250. Um, in that area is apparently a lot of price action in the past. It has served as resistance, it has served as support, and it has recently served as support again. And we're, we just bounced off it upward. The series of lower highs and lower lows is clearly still there, <clears throat> but we're bouncing inside a major support zone. And that's, that makes it interesting to look at from a trading perspective. And if I bring the relative strength into the picture, if I look at the relative strength of the energy complex against GNX, that is the uh, general commodity index, then you can see how that RS ratio line has stabilized. That's due to that momentum line that picked up. It's about around 100. And it now starts to just peak, peak right up. And you can see how that is happening inside that um, raw relative strength line. That's slowing down. It's sort of bottoming in that support zone. <clears throat> so it looks as if it's trying to find a bottom. And the RRG is definitely supporting such a rotation. If you look at the precious metals, it's the other way around. It ran into heavy resistance um, and the resistance again here, it's a pretty broad range. I'd say it's, it's somewhere 2640 to 2740. So it's about 100, uh, 100 points on that index, which is a very heavy resistance area. And you can see how the ROG lines are pretty much the opposite of what we saw in the energy complex. The RS ratio is still at a very high level, there's no doubt about it, uh, but it has lost momentum. It's stabilizing and started to turn down. So from a trading or a pair trading perspective, however you want to do it, um, the near-term daily and weekly timeframes are suggesting a trade or a favoring energy commodities, the energy complex, over precious metals. In other words, uh, favoring oil over gold right now. So that's from a relative perspective. Now, the next thing I want to do is look and see how, especially the energy part, because we don't really have any, well, we can do a lot of gold stocks, of course, but I want to look at the energy sector um, and see how the rotation of the, ener the, the energy group in commodities is impacting on what kind of effect it has on the rotation of the energy sector and the stocks inside it. Following that look at the commodity rotations and the impact of the energy group, I want to go back and focus on the energy sector, the stock energy sector. And back in February, I wrote an article on this sector titled, looks like a major shift in leadership in the energy sector is going on. And that was all about the change um, I, at that time. And I, I still believe it's there um, from Chevron to Exxon. So, um, XOM taking over from CVX. CVX has been a long-term leader 
in the energy sector and it seems to get out of favor right now, um, being overtaken by ExxonMobil. But before we get there, let's take a look at the outright sector rotation. The, here's the monthly RRG for sectors and you can see how detached, how far away XLE is from the center of the chart and, the, and, and all the other sectors. Um, it's got a long tail rotating out of leading and basically just hit the weakening quadrant, but at super high levels, meaning that it is uh, a sector which is in a very long term uptrend relative to the S&P 500. Um, if we bring that to the weekly, then you can see how this long term move down is translated into a weekly tail. So um, we actually could do So this is five months, um, five times five, that would be a tail of 25 weeks. So that would give us something like this and highlight the energy sector. So this move here is equal to this move here. And you can see how the deceleration is taking place and translating into a flatter negative rotation on the weekly RRG and how it has started to point up uh, very, very recently. So that's, I'll take that as an early sign. Um, truth being told, when I wrote that article, that was February 24. So let's scroll back to Feb 24. That was right here, that was in this week. So I, it got further than I had anticipated. It, it actually moved into the lagging quadrant. Um, but still, we'll see why I believe that there is still a shift in leadership going on. And especially backed by the improvement of the um, energy complex in commodities, I still think that we at least should keep an eye on the energy sector in the coming weeks. If we take this <clears throat> weekly to a daily RRG, and things become even more interesting, because you can see that the energy sector actually on the daily RRG is actually the sector with the highest relative momentum. It's got the highest reading on the JDK RS momentum scale, and it's about to cross over into the leading quadrant. Um, this is a very interesting tale. So, even if you think that that long-term rotation hasn't worked out yet, I think that we're going into a at least a near-term um, revival, if you wish, of the energy sector. Maybe it's a continuation of that longer-term trend that is still there because on the monthly, we're, we're way out to the right on that RRG. So let's dive a little bit further into this. Let's bring in the chart for the energy sector itself, so XLE. And what you can see here is that that uptrend, that series of higher lows is still fully intact, uh, apart from that dip here. And that's sort of kind of worrying. We had that sort of double support area here and very briefly XLE just dipped below it. <clears throat> it actually completed a double top, but then very rapidly reversed. And we know that when uh, reversal patterns are not doing what they should do, it usually is a strong sign to the opposite direction. Uh, remember when you've got a head and, head and shoulders top formation and you got the breakdown, which is essentially a negative signal, but very rapidly after that, the price pulls back above that neckline, then um, it's a failed head and shoulders, which is actually a positive thing. A similar thing goes for double top. So here you got a very clear double top, but after an initial dip, we immediately rally above it, and that's a strong sign. Um, so that brings back this double support area around 81, with a very good chance for XLE to actually start pushing towards that resistance in the 1992 area. So XLE is back on the map, um, on the monthly, still going through that negative rotation, but on the weekly and especially on the daily, you can see how those tails 
are moving in the right direction, <clears throat> especially here on the daily. Now, the interesting thing is what's happening inside uh, the sector. So we bring up the individual stocks inside the energy sector and we compare them to XLE. So we got the, basically the strongest stocks inside the energy sector. And obviously uh, Chevron and ExxonMobil are the two big mammoths in that sector. So let's focus on those first. If you look at the tails, then we got ExxonMobil right here inside the leading quadrant, moving sideways. You see how short that tail is compared to all the others, <clears throat> which means that it's at a stable relative uptrend. It's losing a bit of momentum, but it's still very much inside the leading quadrant in a stable relative uptrend. If you look at CVX, Chevron, it's inside lagging, but it's picking up a lot of momentum, but it's not moving much on the uh, uh, RS ratio scale. So it's not picking up a lot of relative strength. That means that it is uh, a recovery in an existing relative downtrend. And you can also see how short that tail is compared to all the others. That is to a degree expected because these two are the biggest parts of that sector. So their tails will always be in general shorter than the others. Um, but nevertheless, these are very stable trends and just using the RS ratio as a scale, as, as, a, as a metric to rank them, um, Exxon is to be preferred over Chevron based on this rotation. If we bring in the individual charts, then we can start with Exxon Mobil and you can see how that took out overhead resistance back in October last year and basically remained above and inside that former resistance now support area with two dips back in January and then very recently in March. But this, the, the, the relative strength line is in a very nicely upsloping channel and that's causing both RRG lines to actually move higher with a, uh, you see how it's running in resistance here and how momentum is sort of fading, but the RS ratio is still at very high levels. That puts ExxonMobil solidly inside the leading quadrant. And if we, if we even lose a little bit more momentum and we dip below 100, especially when the tail remains short, so there's not a lot of power behind that move, then ExxonMobil is still uh, the preferred stock in that sector, at least over uh, Chevron. We'll look at a few others in a minute. Um, resistance coming in around, let's round it off at 120, 119, 120. If XOM takes out 120, obviously that is uh, a real nice new signal for a move to new highs. If we take a look at Chevron CVX, then we can see kind of similar as what we saw in uh, XLE. Uh, again, very high correlation, big, big name in the sector. But you can see how, <clears throat> how that relative move has started to move lower. If you, if you look at ExxonMobil, relative strength moving up. If you look at Chevron, relative strength moving down. And that's putting uh, the tail inside the lagging quadrant, picking up momentum, clearly, but not yet in terms of relative strength. And if you look at the price, then uh, Chevron just bounced back. There is definitely upside potential here. But the big thing is that the upside potential for XOM is probably a lot bigger. And in order to, uh, to look at that, I, I go back to a very long-term chart of ExxonMobil versus Chevron. And obviously these, are, these go back to the 70s. These are really long-term uh, stocks that are around for a long term. It's not like Google or Apple or, or Apple maybe, but Google and Facebook and Twitter that Twitter has gone now even. So Twitter even like when was Twitter? I, I mean that this is this is history. Here's a lot of history. <clears throat> and what we see here is that uh, this is actually ExxonMobil and this is ExxonMobil versus Chevron. So not versus XLE, but versus Chevron. And you can see that there are significant periods where um, either one of them is leading that sector. So especially in the early 80s, it was ExxonMobil all the way, favoring over Chevron. 
And then we have a very long time, almost a decade, that they're going sideways. And then from 2009 onwards, it was Chevron leading the dance. So from here, it, basically outperforming the energy sector was super simple. You just had to um, have Chevron in your portfolio and avoid ExxonMobil and, and you would have outperformed that sector. So now it looks as if that is turning around and it is rolling over and you can see how that break of ExxonMobil to new highs basically has just started. Um, and that's what I think is, is, is a big driver for this sector. Uh, and a signal to favor ExxonMobil over Chevron. And you can see, uh, if you go back in history and you look at the, uh, the values, the numerical values that the RS ratio of ExxonMobil versus CVX has reached and the levels of uh, the raw relative strength, uh, there is plenty of upside for ExxonMobil to outperform Chevron. So within the energy sector, I, I still believe that ExxonMobil is the stock to be preferred over Chevron and that there's a, uh, a significant change in leadership within that sector. If you combine that with the improvement of the energy complex, the energy group uh, in the commodity space, which is dominated by oil, of course, then it will be no surprise that these two stocks um, because Chevron Mobile in itself is not a bad stock. It's just that Exxon Mobile is better. But both stocks, oil industry, oil price going up, relatively better. I think there is all to say for a further improvement of these stocks inside the energy sector. And based on the RRG and the relative strength analysis, I think that I would favor uh, Exxon Mobile over Chevron Mobile, uh, over Chevron. Now, these are not the only two stocks in the sector. So let's have a look at the RRG here and go over a few of the um, names inside the improving quadrant because um, here is where the action is. You can see that the tails inside the leading quadrant are kind of rolling over except for PSX. That's the only one. You can see how that is actually curling back up. So that's an interesting name. Uh, and then a few of the, <coughs> the, the blue ones inside improving, they're all uh, pretty interesting charts. Let's have a look at the uh, chart of PSX first. So here is PSX, Philip 66. And <clears throat> what you can see is that it's running into resistance, but more importantly, um, the, the decline in relative strength has stabilized and it's now in a sideways range for about a year. And if we can take out the upper boundary of that range, then that will definitely push both RRG lines higher and back up into that leading quadrant. Um, I would say take look at that falling trend line, take a look at 110 if that's been taken out. <clears throat> PSX is definitely worth looking at. A few of the others, EQT is uh, the highest reading on the RS momentum scale. And this one is very interesting because it's actually bottoming out uh, after a long decline. And that's always interesting. I mean, if you can pick up something that is uh, bottoming out after a long decline, that may, uh, at least I think, <clears throat> you, you want to buy at low levels. I mean, we like to buy breaks to new highs. We like to buy uh, upside breakouts. But I think it's even more beautiful if there is a very nice kind of setup at a lower level because you know that all that upside potential is still there. And this one is, is perfectly suited to do that. Uh, EQT Corp is uh, bouncing off that 29 support area. This could very well turn into a nice double bottom. Uh, we would need to take out 35 and we're hovering above support in, uh, within the relative strength line. And you can see how both RRG lines <clears throat> are moving higher with RS Momentum already inside, uh, above 100, so putting it inside the improving quadrant. If you look at um, PXD, uh, we got to move quick because we're running out of time. So here you can see PXD bounced off support on its way to the upper boundary of that trend line, and you can see how relative strength has turned around, moving higher. Uh, and pretty much all these stocks have similar patterns. Um, all the ones inside the improving quadrant 
are pretty good. This one also bottoming out against support. This is close to a break around 26. Look at how relative strength is improving. Um, that's also very good. Uh, if you look at Occidental, Oxy is the same story. The only, the only one that is actually not super good, so you can see how it's bottoming out against support, taking out that trend line, picking up in relative strength. The only one that's not good is Williams. Uh, that, that tail is rolling over inside the lagging quadrant. All in all, the renewed strength of oil and energy-related commodities in general seems to be having a positive effect on the energy sector, which has started to turn back up after a long rotation out of leading uh, into weakening and, and even into lagging on the weekly time frame. But there is a revival visible and within the sector the dominance of Chevron uh, seems to be fading and going into favor of ExxonMobil. All in all, I think that oil, energy related commodities and the energy sector are definitely worth a look in the coming weeks. And please keep an eye on the relationship between Exxon and Chevron, uh, because that could be the big change within that sector. And that wraps up Sector Spotlight for this week. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please remember, Sector Spotlight airs every Tuesday from 10.30 to 11 a.m. Eastern on Stock Charts Television. And you can catch the replays and watch previous shows on the Stock Charts YouTube channel or any of the On Demand channels. And you can find at RRG Research on Twitter, Facebook or LinkedIn or simply shoot me an email. I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week for a new episode of Sector Spotlight. Same time, same place. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.